Okay, guys, uh, I'm with Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni is the author of um, The Power Law for Bitcoin, which is, I saw this thing shared by my friend Stephen Perinode. Uh And I think Giovanni, like me, is pretty quantitative, and I think he's an astrophysicist. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Giovanni? Correct, yep. I and, have a uh, in astrophysics. And uh, so where's your, what's your sort of astrophysical background just before we get into Bitcoin? I'm sort of curious as to. Yeah, so I'm, I was interested in uh, uh, neutron stars and in particular as uh, sources of gravitational waves. So okay. in fact, uh, so I was, uh, uh, I was working with this group uh, uh, in uh, Louisiana because it, at that time was one of a few places that had a, a detector so they la you you are probably aware of a LIGO detector right yes that, uh, absolutely yeah they received uh, the Nobel Prize like a couple of years ago yeah uh, and uh, I was working with that group in fact I was part of that organization for some time uh -huh. and, uh, and my advisor actually was one of the pioneers in the field of gravitational waves this was before they even had a the LIGO detector, it was like a frozen right. bar of one ton. You know, it was a really cool device. Right, 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 yeah. And uh, it was like aluminum bar. You know, there were like a couple of these detectors in the world. We were, in fact, Italy, but I am Italian, um, and uh, Italy was also a leader. We had, we had a couple of detectors, one in Rome, one in Padova. And then there was one in the United States, and this was the only place. So I was uh, really intrigued because in a sense, it was almost like Bitcoin. It was like one of these bets right. in, in physics where you were going to go in this very unknown field. You know, we didn't even see gravitational waves. And mm -hmm. I made this crazy bet. The, I did a lot, like even coming here in the United States, my life has been like this. Like, I'm going to do this crazy bet because I think it's going somewhere, you know? And in fact, eventually, gravitational waves has been, a, uh, you know, like it's a leading field in, as, in astronomy right now. Uh, like a pioneering field, and uh, they got the Nobel Prize. But I left the field by the time they got the Nobel Prize. Right, right, <laughs> but, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is what they did. It was in like gravitational waves. Then, during the crisis, during the 2008 crisis, right. I was a, a, a professor in a small college. I was teaching physics. I was still doing research in gravitational waves. Uh, they decided to close down my uh, physics department. Okay. So uh, they had to, let, you know, just keep a few people and they let me go. And uh, um, because it was one of the last hires, I, it was the year where I was supposed to get uh, my tenure. Okay. And I was doing pretty Ow. well. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had to kind of reinvent myself because I didn't want to go through the entire procedure of finding another teaching job and say, I say, you know what, I'm going to do something different. And so uh, for me, it was a very important year, that year of crisis. And like, you know, Satoshi, I decided to change career, but actually it was pretty good for me, even if initially it was a challenge. And so I went wow. to neuroscience and start, and I started to uh, study the neuroscience of sleep. Okay. Uh, I was just wanted to do something else. And uh, I loved uh, the brain. I loved neuroscience. And the idea was, I'm going to use the knowledge that I have in science and math and coding in a different field and see how, you know, if I can leverage that. Okay. And it was a very, again, it was one of these crazy bets that I did and I was very successful and I ended up at Northwestern uh, University in Chicago. I was in there in the neuroscience department, in neurology, in the, in the neurology part. And we had a, like a sleep lab and, uh, you know, we studied the, um, the the neuroscience of sleep and so i started to focus again on things that i was very um, familiar with like waves and periodicities etc mm -hmm. and i use the same tools that i was using to study gravitational waves to study brain waves uh, right. because that is the other thing that uh, you know i i know how to do uh, to see universality in everything you know uh, that again is kind of leads to our talk on bitcoin and uh, uh and so I also had a, a patent, I developed a patent, I de developed a device to improve uh, cognition during sleep because sleep is very important to uh, make long-term memories. And so I develop a device that uh, follows your brain waves in a very adaptive way and then it produces like little impulses of sound that are synchronized to your brain waves and that amplifies the 
typical brain waves during sleep that are called slow waves. And these low waves somehow are, imp uh, we have data to prove that, that in particular with older people, that uh, you almost perform as good as whenever you were young, uh, if you are stimulated by this device. And, uh, and people did other study, they follow up in other university and they show it helps with uh, uh, the immune system and other kind of things like that. And, you know, so I was working at Northwestern, that actually heard about Bitcoin earlier, uh, all the way to 2010. Okay. And I downloaded the wallet at that time, but okay. I, the instructions were a little bit complicated. They were, at that time, were mostly written for computer science people. Right. And, you know, I am a scientist, I'm not a computer scientist. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. And then I put it on the back burner and I never came back. Uh, and I still have a computer as a reminder of how an idiot I was, you know, that I right, right, right. mind on my desktop, you know, because at that time you could do that. And then was it a Windows heard, machine? A Windows machine? It was a Windows machine. It was like yeah, a desktop, yeah. you know, like right, a, yeah. But at that time you could do it, you know, it was, the right. hash yeah. power required was, uh, uh, you could do it even, right. people started to do it with uh, graphic cards just a little bit later. Right. And then they had ASIC, you know, later on. But uh, um, I was also interested in transhumanism. I was, uh, um, you know, I was part of this newsletter uh, that, uh, um, you know, discussed things like uh, AI and, uh, again, you know, a bunch of visionaries and people yeah. that look at the future and things like that. And, and that's where you that's where you saw Bitcoin on that newsletter on that news group. Yeah, yeah. In fact, is is that article is pinned okay. on my ex account, and they send me one of these articles that we are discussing. The entire preposition was, you know, we are visionary, visionary. We want to defeat aging. We want to defeat cancer. We want to go to Mars. You know, as a transhumanist, and many of us don't have assets because you know we are professor, we are intellectual, we are scientists. And, you know, right. we, we do a, an okay living, but we don't have the resources to do the things we want to do. But, hey, here there is this invention called Bitcoin that I knew about it. And this was a reminder of a Bitcoin. And, you know, he, uh, he was explaining, and probably because uh, this guy was somebody that was able to look at the future, he was saying, this thing is going somewhere, you know. And he understood the technology was describing. I, I love to read these old articles about what people were thinking, you know, in, in these times, these very wow. early times about Bitcoin. And he, if I, it was a hint, but this article really made a very amazing point for me. And I understood. I, I always say I don't get when people say, you know, I don't understand Bitcoin because I completely understood it from the beginning. I knew that Bitcoin was going somewhere, you know, and I knew that I understood the technology. It was, I, I mean, it wasn't, it. I don't know what year, what, what year are we talking back then? We, this is 2012. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and, but you know, people were still talking about tulips. We're still talk, we're not, right, not talking course, about yeah. tulips even now, but uh, at that time, you know, people, in, in fact, he had a, even a little graph at the yeah. end of the article is this little graph. And it shows, and it was a really few little data because, you know, the markets just opened like right. a little bit before. And so he had like maybe like what, one year of data, not even. And he was saying, this is not tulips because we we had a, our first bubble, you know, the one mm -hmm. uh, around 2010, something like that. And bubbles, once they crash, they stay crash. They don't go right. anywhere. And there was a recovery there. And this was his argument, his kind of mathematical argument. And then he even said he was trying to do some kind of modeling. He was drawing a, a line there. <laughs> like this was one of the really, really early mod models. And he say it looks exponential. And I look at the graph and I say, hmm, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, it looks nice. It looks regular, but I don't think it's exponential. And so this were actually my adventure in uh, trying to understand Bitcoin from a mathematical point of view started. So uh, that far, you know, almost basically uh, 12 years right and so uh, i'm not like you know everybody knows about plan b uh, plan b is a newcomer in comparison with me i was doing modeling all the way to that time it's just that for some reason my models didn't become really popular 
and I also was stupid because instead of publishing, let's say, in an important, you know, in some kind of scientific journal, I was posting. Okay, so let's let's, let's let's try to let's try to zero in on your model. Yes, yes. Okay, right. let's so, zero in on your model. So yeah, why don't we look at? Can we can we actually look at the? Let's start. Let's talk about power laws. So yes, power yes. laws happen all over the place in nature. They're just Correct. endemic to nature. Why is that? Why are power laws so endemic to nature? It's a very good question. It's uh, it's mostly because first of all, they are relatively simple uh, um, type of relationship, right? So uh, when we talk about power law, we talk about a quantity, let's say y that is related to another quantity, it can be anything, let's call it x, right? Uh, and the relation is such that x is raised to the power, and that power can be anything. It can be the square, the cube, and so on. And usually they come because, for example, one of the first uh, power laws that was discovered or was thought about uh, was uh, my uh, countryman, Galileo. So right. Galileo was thinking about sizing. And so that is actually another clue. There are, there is power laws are a real, you know, there, there is a kind of thread line there. And one of the thread line is whenever you're thinking about sizes, so you, you start with something that is relatively small and then you make it bigger because you double it. And then you make right. it even bigger, you double it again. So you're talking about changes that are relatively big. You are not interested in small changes. You are talking about, okay, if I look at this phenomena from, uh, you know, using a drone or you know, a, f a bird kind of view, how the phenomena looks like, how it scales. That is. Really okay. Do we have an example of that in in your yeah, thing? So, so we can just an example. Show everybody. Yeah, so I was mentioning why they come up because you will understand almost immediately when I mention this first mm -hmm. example. But I don't have a graph of it. But uh, it's very simple. In his idea. That's kind of related to this example that I will show you in a moment. And his idea was, he was trying to understand how big an animal can get. And okay, so oh yeah, right. the critical uh, parameters here are the mass of the animal, mm -hmm. because, you know, basically the uh, mass of the animal will scale up with the volume, right? And the volume, because in, in, we have this joke in physics of, <coughs> of a spherical cow, you know, all the animals can be approximated with a sphere, you know? It's an approximation, but it makes calculations simple. So if you mm -hmm. have a, a spherical animal, it's mm -hmm. kind of like that, but it basically goes with the radius cube, right? So right. Uh, if you double the size of an animal, the mass of the animal will go up with not twice, but uh, two to the cube, that is eight, right? So right. eight times and so on, uh, you know, um, but uh, the animal needs to stand on the feet, and the feet is a surface, right? The bones, etc. So the bones, how much load they can have, goes up with the square. So okay. if you take a ratio, and because the ratio is what is relevant, it's, it's basically the pressure that you will have on these bones, it will be the mass of the animal divided by the square, right? Because that is the surface of contact of the animal with the ground. And that you can see it's a ratio between quantities that are all related to this geometric quantity, like for example, the cube or the square. So you take a ratio, it will be a linear relationship. A linear relationship uh, is a particular case of a power law because the power there is one in that case. Right? Right. But this is how they come up. They come up because in nature, there are all these things that uh, somehow scale up with the cube because we are talking about geometry or maybe we talk about some other properties that have to do with the power. And then right. they, they are very universal. But it's beautiful because we have a certain property. And one of these properties that uh, we are going to discuss is the scale invariance. But here I have an example. I don't know if we can zoom in, but... Uh, uh, maybe uh, I don't know how to zoom computer. in, but maybe if you zoom in on your computer. Yeah, I will zoom in on my computer because uh, you will can see it better in that way. Um, so let yeah. me see if I can do that. Yes, I think I know how to do it. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and no, uh, okay. I will go uh, to that example. Because this is a very beautiful example. Yeah, you okay, see this, this graph okay, now? So this is your Galileo example. 
Yeah, this is related, but actually it's a, modern, a more modern uh, principle. Yeah. It still has to do with uh, animals. Right. And in ca this case, I don't remember exactly. I think it was in the 30s. This was discovered by this scientist called Kleber. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, what uh, we see here is this relationship between the mass of an animal and the metabolic rate. And it's right. a beautiful graph. So basically, first of all, the first thing to notice is that we are dealing with a power law, explicitly log off. But basically, uh, what we are doing dealing here is uh, what is called a log log graph. It means that you're taking the log of a x quantity and the log of a y quantity. Mm -hmm. And power laws show up like a straight line. And probably, you know, because you're a mathematician, you can do that yeah. in your head. But yeah. if you have something that is well, I think I think you 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 glossed over for people who aren't mathematicians or don't have yeah so what happens right because of it first, log first of all first of all let's talk yeah. about what is a logarithm for most people so a logarithm is basically a, a mathematical operation where uh, you it's kind of a, like a, the inverse of uh, taking exactly. the, squ the square of a cube like the easiest one to understand it's the log of 10 right so if I express numbers in terms of their power using what is called a base of 10, right? So for mm -hmm. example, we, we do that all the time in science, it's called scientific notation. So if I have uh, 10, 10 is 10 to the power of one, right? If I have 100, it's 10 to the power of two. If I have 1000, right. it's 10 to the power of three. So if I take the log base 10, I apply to that number, I get the exponent. So if I have right. a log of 10, of 10 to the two, that is 100, I get two. If I take the log of 10 of 1,000, because 1,000 is 10 to the 3, it gives me... So I basically imagine you are applying the log to this number and the right. output is the exponent, right? So right. you apply log to the 10 to 1,000, you get 3 because you right. get the exponents of 10 to the 3. So that is basically a the way of, of emphasizing. So you apply this uh, operation to the number, you are emphasizing on the scale. So now all of a sudden, right, one, two, three, four, that are the exponents are linearized. <laughs> so you have something that is not linear and because of a log, you linearize it because right. you are now focusing on the scaling of a number. And so, so let's yeah. just describe how different kind of power laws plot linearly. So, you know, you can have different, different, um, different uh, slopes of the line correct and so when when you do this operation if you go yeah. through very relatively simple math if you have an uh, uh, two quantities that relate with the power what the log does it makes uh, this thing that will look like a curve so if i plot it in a normal graph it will look like a, a very fast growing curve sure. right uh, but because i'm taking the log of both sides, it looks like a straight line. So it's right. a trick that we do, because if we see a straight line in a log log graph, then, oh, okay, this is a uh, this is a power law. And it turns out, and you can show relatively simple, because basically that exponent now goes down because of the property of the logs, and it becomes yeah. the slope, is the slope. Uh, so when you do your fitting, you know, you, there is this mathematical problem, uh, the fitting, gives you two parameters. It gives you the intercept of, a, right. of this uh, straight line on so the y-axis. So in this case, 0.1, roughly, a little bit more than 0. Yeah, roughly, if you probably, you extend it a little bit more in this uh, relatively small number, because it makes sense, right? Because remember what this graph is trying to tell us. This graph is telling, if I have a certain body mass, what is the, how much energy the animal is using? So if I have a, an animal that is zero mass, <laughs> it will consume zero energy. So it's going to go very close to zero. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what the Y intercept is. If it is not zero, it's going to be a small number. Same thing happened with Bitcoin when uh, we're going to discuss it with, with Bitcoin. The Y intercept is small. Right. The, other, the other number it, that is more important, that this it's is where the focus is, the line. is going to be the slope of a line. That it turns out to be the power. And so, you measure the slope and you get the power. And why the power is important? Because it tells you, it's almost like kind of a signature about the phenomena. If, you, if that little number is going to contain a lot of information. For example, what about this graph? So 
look, let's look at this graph. What this graph does, it organizes all the different animals in this, uh, uh, you know, by, you measure the mass, you measure the, how much energy we are using. Notice, for example, humans, they are there, they are about 100 watts, that is like a bulb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, yeah. we have as, as much energy as a bulb. It is really hard, hard to imagine, really. It's, but that, it's hard to imagine, right? But this is what uh, we need every day. So we consume about 100 watts, that is equivalent to a bulb. And, and we, uh, an elephant is, t is 10 light bulbs. Te and and uh, the elephant uh, is, you know, a little bit more than 10 light bulbs. But again, it's but, crazy, right? But the elephant is, is more than... We only take 10 light bulbs for the elephant, 10 yeah. times as much. However, the, the elephant the is... weighs 100 times as much as yeah, we Yeah, exactly. So this is where uh, there are the clues. And this is how, you know, because you are a mathematician, you immediately saw that, right? Uh, right? This is how you will think and say, okay, how they scale, how they scale, how the mass scales relatively to the energy. And you see uh, by just inspection, like you did, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the first thing that is striking is the regularity, right? Because uh, you will think, what is going on there? You know, like if you're a scientist, you're immediately in love with something like that. It's, a, it's not, not possible. When you see that, it's absolutely not possible that this is random. Right? Exactly. And, and the other clue is how, you know, how many scales, right? It goes from very, very small, little tiny animals all the time, all the way right. to a huge, big one. So it cannot be random. It cannot be due to some, you know, crazy... Yeah. Um, lack, you know, it's something universal. A scientist immediately see that right. and uh, recognizes, and then see different type of animals with different type of uh, uh, size and lifestyles, etc. Uh, some are mostly a, are they look like mammals, but you know there is even birds, and uh, you know the hen is over there. So it's something incredible. The condor, okay. right? Different birds. And uh, and so uh, the slope is telling us something. Like you did it just by inspection, by looking at one example, right. and right. we could look at others. But it turns out that the slope is actually three quarter. Okay. And why that is important? Because it's less than one. Right. And so what what does it mean? It means that if I double the size of an animal, the number of cells roughly doubles, right? Because uh, the, the number of cells will go with the mass. The mass goes. Uh, you know, right. with, uh, my doubling. So if I double the mass, I, I will expect uh, twice the number of cells. Mm -hmm. But the metabolism doesn't go up with two. It goes up with two to the power of three quarter. That is not two. It's actually less than two. It's something like 1.6. So mm -hmm. you see, doubling the size of an animal creates some kind of economy where uh, the animal is a little bit more efficient and mm. it needs less energy. And in fact, oh. in your example of the elephant, the other day I calculated it's supposedly to be, uh, you know, like uh, almost 100,000 times bigger than the mouse, but the energy consumed is only 10,000. So there is a factor of 10 mm -hmm. yeah. saving the energy because of that uh, <laughs> three quarters. The elephant so is more efficient in a way. In a way much than the more mouse. efficient, and this is why we have large animals. Because okay. in one end, they get a disadvantage. Of and why don't we, and, and the reason we don't have bigger and bigger animals, it goes back to your, the other relationship that between the, uh, the, the, the pressure, you exactly. don't, you can't, you can't get much more than an elephant because otherwise they can't, they can't stand up anymore. He will crash on himself, right? So It'll there are crash. other things that confine, constrain, and this also is relevant Bitcoin because, you know, when okay. they always, they ask me this. Let's, let's, one. let's move to the yeah. Bitcoin chart now. Sure. So we, we, we understand now the log log charts. I'm just going to summarize. We understand yes. that the intercept is somewhat important. The slope is even more important because that's Correct. really the, that's really the thing. Now let's look at this Bitcoin chart. Yes. Okay. So the usual chart that I do is uh, really fitting the middle and you can do okay. it in a different way. But basically the first thing I did, uh, you know, and uh, I appreciate that you are keeping me on track. I like that because- I'm uh, I'm I just want to keep the narrative and I may edit it around just making a little bit yeah, more- Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. you're pointing the most important thing. So I, I did study other log, pro, uh, other power laws because by the way there are power laws everywhere there is power law with ash rate there is power laws uh, and you can but let's, just, let's keep on yeah. focus well let's go back on that but let's just yes. look at the bitcoin now before we go this right yes there's you see a lot of people who price 
the the t- the days or time axis in non log form, mm-hmm. and then they use the log of price, yes. right? And in particular, I think Plan B does that, right? I think he uses not it's not log log it's just it's just a time versus the log of uh, in, in his uh, S to F in the S to F model. Yeah. So what he did he claims if you go back to his original article that he yeah. sees a power law he sees okay. a power law between S to F that is basically the supply over the flow. Right. Basically, how many uh, coins are produced. He calculates this quantity and then he has the price. So he has in the y axis, sorry, in the x axis, he has the log of S to F. And then in the y axis, he has the log of price. And then he gets. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know he did log log. But what I'm trying to say is. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's, 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 it's customary yeah. to show. You see, like in, in many trading so, uh, things, time yeah. is in, in years mm-hmm. and then Bitcoin price is in log, right? Right. So now, so, what is the difference between doing log log versus just one axis in log? What 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 do you get out of it by looking at well, it log the log? The first thing is you get this right that and that is the same thing that uh, happened to you when you actually saw it right because you saw it this on my X account and immediately right. with your intuition, oh, yeah. mathematician, you immediately recognize. You yeah. can see it. It's it strikes you. Okay, even people that don't understand log, somebody said, I think this was a, uh, what happened on Bitcoin, you know, on that show. They actually show this chart and they say they use this. You're talking about say, Peter McCormick's show? Yeah, yeah. He said, uh, right. so one of them said, you cannot unsee it. Right. And no. it's true because you no, can No, no, I agree. It. Well, because it's, look, in one case, you're looking at sort of a. A, a, a curve, right? Or a Correct. rainbow or something, right? But when you see a line and you see a bunch of data points yeah. on the line, exactly. that, then you sort of realize, okay. So the line, not, you know, yeah. and uh, I have a slide, it's not here, but I made a joke. It was a kind of a meme where uh, I showed, you know, the linear chart that is usually what we show on TV, mm-hmm. what Kram- Kramer is talking about, you know, because it right. doesn't really look uh, anything special, right? It looks uh, messy. And then you you do the log of a y axis, and you start right. to see there is some regularity there, right? right? It doesn't look that messy. It looks like a very nice pattern, but you know okay. the human eyes is not able to say to look a curve and say, oh yeah, okay, that is a power law, right? Now that we don't that have law, the curve you're drawing there, and this particular this particular one, which is a little yeah. different from some of the ones I've seen, but this yeah. particular one is sort of your you're not you're kind of drawing it on the bottom. Of the, yeah, so this is a, a variation of a team because right. you can still see the beautiful linearity of the overall pattern. Right. Right. But in this case, I'm making even a stronger argument and then say, forget about the line that goes through the middle because that is another thing you can do. You can right. say, okay, it looks like a straight line. Let me do a regression. That will mean right. drawing a line through the middle. I say, forget okay. about that. Let me take out the bubbles because the bubbles, basically, you can think of them as kind of outliers, right? It's not really their main story of Bitcoin. They are these okay. excitement periods where Bitcoin goes out of the uh, general trend. And then look at this. It seems to go back, right? Every right. time there is uh, one of these exciting periods, it goes back and it does what it was doing before. Okay. So this is well, what exc- these exciting are periods graphic. are what we live for, Giovanni. I know, and it, and they are great, and they are part of a Bitcoin story, and you can use them, you know, to do DCA, etc. But it's also very reassuring and right. very nice to know that even when there are bear market, the price right. goes up. So in a sense, so this chart is telling a lot of things. One of the lessons is, which which bear market are you talking about? Because look at this, right? Will you be happy? Right. With that growth, if you didn't have a bubble, you yes, it will be. A, yeah. Remember, we are talking about. So when we extract the power, remember right. these are uh, these curves allows us to extract the power. The right. power that I showed here, it's Looks like five point nine. It's almost right. six. So we are uh-huh. talking about. So everybody, do you remember when people say, "Hey, price went parabolic," right? When you're talking about uh, an asset that is mm-hmm. going crazy, etc. Well. Parabola is square, right? X to yeah. the square. This yeah. one is X, you know, time. 
because we are talking the, the x time the x here is the days from the genesis block this right. is what uh, we measure everything in terms of how mm. long bitcoin existed so we measure the time mm -hmm. starting from the genesis block and right. we are taking the power of that time to the six <laughs> so if you if you thought that uh, that was a much parabola, faster. it's much it's faster, much faster. so it's a super parabola so right. it's okay. not exponential because s to f by the way it's exponential the, right. if you if you extrapolate uh, s to f to the future you get an exponential behavior this is right. not as fast as s to f is uh sometimes people say oh it's very bearish what are you talking about we're talking about well it's, it, the power it, so in, in computers in computer science we distinguish between in uh, complexity theory we, de we determine between things which are polynomial yep and, and non-polynomial right correct so, so this in is this polynomial, this is polynomial. It's it polynomial. This is x to the power of six, right? Correct. And so, so it's still fast, but it's not as fast as an exponential. But it, but it's still x to the power of six. Yeah. So it's very fast. It's amazing. It's incredible. But you have a trade-off. The trade-off here is that exponential systems tend to crash. They are not stable. Right. They go, grow, 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 and then boom, they crash. In so fact, let me give you so let me just give you on two to the power six the, the x yeah. to the power six yes an intuitive way to think about x to the power six right yes is bitcoin has been going for 15 years right Correct. so what if i go for another 15 years right yeah. exactly. i would expect not to double the uh mm -hmm. price of bitcoin from where we are i would expect yeah. it to go to one, two, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. I would Correct. expect it to be sixty-four times as high exactly. in fifteen years, right? So exactly. basically, you that's you double the time, time the power get... of two to the six. Basically, it's yeah. sixty-four. Yeah. Right. So this Correct. gives you a, a very easy way to think about what this power is, right? Yeah, this exactly. power says in fifteen years. We're going to go up 64 times. Do you like Perfect. that? You I personally love, love that. That's great. I love That's it. Great. And in fact, I always use that example to explain how all these mythologies that we have around Bitcoin are mm -hmm. actually expressed in the power law. You know how, right. for example, um, you know the Bitcoin standard talks about uh, preference time, right? Yeah. So yeah. preference time is this idea that. Uh, if you, you if you want something good you want to wait you need to wait yeah. right and so i always say if you had the two oddlers and one waited two times more he's not going to get two times more goods more cookies he's going to get 64 more times well and if, and if he, that, uh, totally agree right and and you know there's i think there was stuff i think uh, in that same book the safety and stuff where they they analyze infants and they say if an infant can wait, uh, you know, an extra hour before getting a cookie and he'll get two cookies and yeah. then they take the same children and they look at how how did they do in life 20 years later? Yep. The ones that could wait the extra hour to get two cookies did a lot better. Much better. And same thing with <laughs> Oddling. So it's same fantastic. Thing with and probably he didn't know about the power law. Uh, uh, Amos, right? His name? Uh, the yeah. Of a, a standard. No. Uh, he didn't know at the same time because of his intuition and his understanding right intuitive understanding of bitcoin he was perfectly right because this is an, a mathematical expression of a cookie experiment this is what right. it is and he's telling you you know be be calm you know be patient and the power law will take care of you and in fact if i remember well three times means 720 so you know by the time you triple right. and cetera, it got really crazy now right. it's not exponential and many people really love s2f because of that but yeah. i'd rather have a system like this now whatever i always say whatever bitcoin does bitcoin does i cannot control it nobody else can control it that is right. the beauty of it at the same time if you if this is true because this is just a scientific hypothesis that seems confirmed by the data if this right. is true then power laws are associated with stability are uh, associated with anti-fragility because uh, you know this is why organisms follow power laws because it turns out it's uh, for a power law system 
it's easy to scale up, first of all. So if we want uh, Bitcoin to be the monetary system of the world, it can handle go up another 10. It can handle go up another 100. It has right. done that for seven orders of magnitude. So other two orders of magnitude is nothing. It can do right. it. It will continue to do it. And so this is this, uh, this idea of scale invariance. Dollar to $10, to $100. And look how it did it. It did it in a very consistent way. So Giovanni, if you had to look at this, so 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 we got to the point where we understand that that Bitcoin price in a very statistical sense is going up like a power law with roughly somewhere between five and six as its power, right? Correct. And I've and I've seen lower estimates. I've seen five point four, uh, but mm -hmm. let's not let's not squabble over this stuff. Let's just say it's in that order of magnitude. Right. Do we have any intuition? Is there any intuition that would give us why this thing would be at the sixth power as opposed to, say, at the fourth power or the third power or the second yeah, power? Yeah, I, I, no, I, I, it's like one of it. I wake up thinking about that and then I go to sleep thinking about that. Where that number comes from, I have no clue. Um, I don't know. There's something about, first of all, you know, why power law in Bitcoin? Because it's a network. And in fact, the other day I was thinking, you know, it's the only network mm -hmm. where uh, the value is in the network itself. Because most networks, the value, it's in the utility, right? So think about, mm -hmm. you know about Metcalf, right? Do you, uh, oh, yeah. you know I, about... I've met, I, by the way, I have met Bob Metcalf. Okay. So Metcalf yeah. is one of these uh, uh, and I will send. I will send you something which was very funny. But I had a product way back in, in the 1990s. Right. And Bob Metcalf loved my product. And he wrote this, this thing about Fred's product is great. I met oh, Fred. He's got the, yeah, we uh, love it. I'll show you the Bob Metcalf uh, on Fred. In fact, so. you know, my first post ever was yeah. because I did a kind of what uh, S2F, the, uh, Plan B did. I did a two-step right. process. I found a, a power law between addresses and price. And then right. I made a model of how the addresses will uh, will grow in time. It looks like you were talking the other day about viruses, right? So I made a model that is very similar to the viruses growth. Uh, I use the mm -hmm. logistic uh, curve for the growth of addresses. And then because I found this relationship between addresses and price, I could determine the growth of price in time. But it was mm -hmm. a two-step process. This one is more direct. And Metcalf has to do with that because addresses are kind of a proxy for users. And what McCalf did, he was thinking about landlines, phones. Right. So he's sort so, of saying like it goes up as the kind of the square, right? So yeah, he came up with this uh, uh, statement, this theoretical statement, the, the value yeah. of a network, uh, you know, the price of a, of a company, you know, that uh, right. has uh, some kind of network, like for example, phone mm -hmm. lines will go up with the square of number of users. But again, right. right, because hopefully people start to understand how mm -hmm. this works. Uh, if you have a square, you double, right? This is how we understand intuitively what the power does. You double, you get mm -hmm. four times. So if you double right. the number of users of a network, uh, the value should go up with uh, four. If you triple with nine and so on and so on. But when I did it, empirically because the beauty of Bitcoin that you have all this data and you can analyze and whatever the data are, the data are, right? So I analyze it because you can think about addresses kind of like a proxy for users. Mm -hmm. It's a sign of activity of a system. You can use transaction, you can use other things. When I measured it was 1.5 or something like that. So it was not quite Metcalf. It meant maybe that the, the network was not as efficient because, you know, the calculation of Metcalf was about like the, the stream case, the most uh, uh, idealistic case where everybody's connected with everybody else. Right. And no, net, no real network will ever be like that. So, you know, it was close to what Metcalf said, but not quite. And so that was actually very relevant, right? So uh, we have that, that value. And then I was thinking, you know, for Bitcoin, it's even better because, you know, people jump from one network to another when the time comes because 
you know, sure, it's difficult because it's difficult to leave your uh, land phone and so on. But if there is a, a much better technology like a cell phone, you will do that. And in fact, or or that. or even if it's a similar technology like MySpace and Facebook. Correct. If, but, uh, if there are more people on Facebook now, you go to Facebook. Everybody wants to go there. But with Bitcoin, it's not going to work like that. Why? Because you put your value in it. The value is not in the utility. The value is in the network itself. So basically, it's almost like an organism, right? When the cell decided to come together, stick together, mm -hmm. they could not leave because if they leave, they die. Right. Exactly. So the value goes down immediately and everybody dies. So the same thing happened with Bitcoin. You put your value, you put your money, you put your energy in this system. And sure, one person can go and, you know, sell all his Bitcoin. But the system itself is not going to do that because it, the entire value of the network will crash and there will be forces that stop to do that. So it's, a, it's a, I think, the first uh, system of this kind in humanity where the value is in the network itself. That no, I agree. Look, yeah. you know, a lot of that was yeah. not a, is going to determine my value of Bitcoin. I don't care that much, right? It, it, it t to some extent, it's true, right? Because yes. those, as more people join this the system, they're going to have to buy Bitcoin from a scarce supply, and that's going to increase the price of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much the transaction value between me and those people. It's the fact that there's more people clamoring for that scarce asset that's going to increase it. Yeah, so. I, I, I have my theory about scarcity. Let's not go there because it's okay. a little complicated and it's a, it's a, a touchy subject for some people. I, I will okay. need to write an entire essay about that. But I think really it's this amplifying power of mm -hmm. being the value itself. If you think okay. about, think really hard about that, how incredible, it's really like an organism. It's basically a bunch of single units coming together. It's basically is the world that mm -hmm. is coming together and deciding to work on this thing somehow, right? It's not that uh, we meet somewhere and we discuss, but we put our energy, we put our time, we're putting uh, our thinking behind right. the system and the system, it's amplified because the value it's in the system itself. And so okay. this could be an expression of that, of this amplification of all this energy, all this, uh, you know, human value that is coming together. So, so if I we don't look, know, I will, I will love Fred, uh, you know, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put my thinking brain on too. You know? I'm going to put my I'm brain on too, because I'm going to try to see if there's anything I can come up with get, that gets me X to the power of six, because exactly. I think that will be fun. That's first of all, super interesting, but. The other thing I was going to say, if you look at your first graph, which is the the the, um, the the organisms, right? Yeah, yeah. The organisms, we stop at the elephant, right? Or I don't know if the blue whale is on there, but you know, we we do. There's some limit to how big you can get. Yes. There, there doesn't. I don't know what, if there's a limit as to how small you can get because there's pretty small animals, right? By, by the way, this uh, law uh, works also with cells, with different type of cells. Okay. You can, you but what I'm saying, what I'm, yeah. what I'm trying to get at with the case yeah. of Bitcoin is where at some point, maybe the law breaks down at the very end, right? Sure. Why? I don't know, because at some point, if I take X to the power six, basically the dollar is essentially worthless relative to Bitcoin. Correct. You know, in fact, it's calculated, so, but you have to consider, though, there are also some other good things about uh, this power law that because it takes longer and longer. So, for example, uh, we need to wait until 10 years from now to get mm -hmm. to one million. And we need to wait all the way to 2050 to get to 10 million. So, you okay. know, it's not going to happen that quickly. That is a good thing. Remember the cookies, but it's going there. It's uh, the other thing is. So, okay, so wait, wait, let, let me just get that. I'm going to just, I'm going to yeah. keep that and I'm going to pinpoint. It. So right now we're, let's say 60,000, right? Yes. I'm going to say 50, just to, to mathematically. We're at 50,000. Mm -hmm. To go to a million, okay, is yeah. 20x. Wait, okay, so 20x to go to a million. Yeah. I go, I go to 20x and, uh, and yeah, you say it's going to take 10 years to get to 20x. 2000, on your, uh, 2033. Yeah, 2023. Okay, end of 2033. So about 10 okay. years. So, in in a power law, we get to a million in 2023. Okay, okay, and and then so we, 
again, so if I use the, so it should be the same. So if and I want to go, Fred, sorry to interrupt you. The beauty of this is, if this is true, it's mm -hmm. unavoidable. It's completely right. unavoidable. It's unavoidable. Yeah. I, I, okay. So let's just say if this is the case, it takes 20 years to go. It takes, sorry, it takes 10 years to, to, it takes 10 years to 20 X. That's a good way to think about it, right? It takes 10 right. years to, it takes 10 years to 20 X. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take 20 years to go to 20 million is what you're saying. No, because it's a scaling fake, right? So, uh, it's taking longer and longer. So, uh, longer. It, so it's going to take 50 years. Is that what you're saying? Right. So it's going to go all the way to 50 years because, you know, it's okay. not an exponential. Where the, you know, this is, the, this is the thing where we're, the intuition is often very wrong. It is. It is. Yeah. Right. So if so I say, well, I, you know, if you look at the chart, to million, right, it took a few weeks to go from zero to one, you know, I think it took like, what, two years, if I remember okay. well, to go to. Well, this is right. really interesting. This is really yeah. interesting from a from a, a sort of asset allocation perspective, because one million seems pretty doable in this in this mm -hmm. thing. Right. Well, a million, you know, and none of these charts are perfect. They're not predictive in, in, in a it's going to happen in 10 years versus eight years versus 12 years. Correct. It's somewhere around there. But like Bro, close. If, if you think about it, the chance of us getting to a million in the next two decades is probably 90%. Yeah. Right. So it's, we're probably going to get to a million. Now, if I said, okay, great. How about 30 million? Well, I may not be alive for 30 million is what you're telling me. 2050. Yeah. Hopefully we are. And, you know, life, life is we're, we're not we're not we're, we're, we're not going to be spring chickens. OK, yeah. let me put it that way. No. Right. No. 2050 is a ways away. Right. It is. Right. So my point is, even though. As Michael Saylor says, it goes up forever. Laura. Right. That's his expression. Yeah. It's it, it's not necessarily going to go up at the breakneck speed you see. So I would argue this is a much much great reason why you sort of think, okay, I kind of really want to get involved now. If yeah. I, if I have some asset allocation, because I could get that 20 X that that's pretty doable right now. Right. Correct. Correct. But if you want to get, you know, if you come in and you, if you, if you, if you take 10 years to make up your mind on Bitcoin, number one, you're going to be buying it at a million, right. <laughs> which is not that going to be that great. No. Right. And uh, number two, um, number two, you know, you could be looking at, you know, just to get a, a five X, you know, from or from that. You could be looking at longer, right? Yes. And so it's not great. I have an equation that considers yeah. when you get in and when yeah. you got out. I, po I posted it the other day and you can see right. it's going down. Right. So if it's going down yeah. in terms of fascinating, how much this is you will have done according to where you joined. Okay, so um, let me ask. Let me let me play devil. I I first of all, I I buy what you're saying, right? I think that roughly this is the case. Now, what about sir? This does seem sort of inevitable, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I would argue that with these ETFs, right, we have a sudden thing that really is going to enable sort of mass spreading of this yeah. viral thing, right? Yep. Does that just mean that we go into one of these pump ups here okay. and then we go back to the power law? Is that is that sort of way you the way you see it? Absolutely. And I, I let okay. me say something else. OK, so most people really want to buy and hold. And that is really great. And Sailor, he's really right when he says, you know, you're stupid if you're trying to trade, etc. Right. But but that I think applies to the average job. Now, if you understand the secret of this and you trust it, then yeah. it tells you something else. It tells you that there is a, another story. So there are two parallel stories here. There is the power mm -hmm. law story. And then there is this bubble, right? That you were saying right. this when we have fun, when we, but it's not just fun. You can use that. So my suggestion to my followers, and I have a discord group, but you know, right. we are okay. thinking together about this, etc., okay. is that we right. can use these bubbles. It at our in in our favor how do we use them well there are these bubbles are very regular and i have a i don't know if you saw this uh uh clock i have a, like a clock in fact 
Let me yeah. show you this picture. Yeah, let's look at Let the me show you line. this picture because you you will like this picture. Right. See, look at this picture. Okay. Okay. You see it. So uh -huh. what I did, I put the power law on a polar coordinate graph. Now the oh, polar wow. coordinate graph is something that somebody else did. I think his name is Rational Root or something. It's something that again we do in physics all the time when we want to study periodicities. We mm -hmm. put uh, the data in a polar graph, and then uh, if there are periodicity, you you will be able to see them. So, but okay. you know, whoever uh, like right. I, I was the first one to do the power law in Bitcoin. I get the credit. He gets the credit. My okay. contribution was to plot the power law. Okay. that same graph and when you do it you get this this thing that is called in fact there is such a thing in in physics we call it a power law spiral and the spiral because uh, now your price is going to be the radius of this thing that rotates right <laughs> and then okay. the time is the angle like in a clock okay. right? right the time in a clock is the angle right the angle right minutes, uh, is yeah. you know like uh, three hours is represented by 90 degree right six okay, hours right. is represented by 180. so if you right. do that and then you in this case i project uh, the clock imagine you have your end right and then right. You look at a shadow of a, of a, of a end on the y-axis is going to be like a sine wave and right. that sine wave is very, very regular. And in, in fact, it tells us the tops, it tells us the t bottoms, it tells us directional changes from going from the bear mm -hmm. market to the bull market. It tells us everything. So and where where are we now, right we now? Today. So this is up to basically a few days ago. And in fact, yeah. I even come up with a, a time. So, you know, zero, if zero is your top, and three is your bottom. Right now we are six o'clock, six six twenty uh, in the clock, and, okay. and that means is basically we are leaving the bear market behind. It's a transition. Uh, it happened a few weeks ago. We transitioned from the bear market to uh, the bull. So the bear market. So when you say on, on a on a clock basis, bear market is what clock? What at what time? It's between what? three and six. Okay. So three will be the bottom. Uh, okay. So here, you see here, this is midnight, right? Or okay. zero. So, so we're we're at, we're still we're still basically at the at the sort start of, of a of a bull market. We're and so then, that's what I think. I think yeah. we're I think we have a bull market ahead of us. Right. So it, and if you use this knowledge together with the deviation from the uh, from the mm -hmm. trend, because uh, you see how it gets all the bottoms, mm -hmm. right? Very nice. It's much more precise by way like you mm -hmm. saw in the charter before, to get the bottoms, right? Uh, so if you use this knowledge and you do carefully mm -hmm. and with, you know, with a plan, then you right. could do DCA. And so you could say, add to my buying of Bitcoin when I am close to the bottom. This chart right. tells me exactly where it is. But then, let's just be, I, let's be very specific because look, let's just go with our number of 10 years to get to a million, right? So. Right. In theory, it should take us 10 years to get to a million. What if we get to a million in five years or in six years? Probably, well, I, I probably a good that, time, uh, probably yeah. a good time to at least take maybe half off the table. Right. But uh, even better than that, Fred, look, if you really trust this chart, okay, and you think it continues to do this thing, I actually did a little game where I look mm -hmm. at the best case scenario okay so yeah. take it with a pinch of salt but it gives kind of a, like you know we talk in math and physics uh, mm -hmm. upper limit right what we can do like in the best case scenario in the best case scenario between year and 10 years from now you can do and if you do like really the gen things yeah. like you short etc because i really wanted to see the best case scenario okay. right so take a fraction of that for a more realistic okay. scenario That's Kind you of, get okay. 320 times, not 20, right. but 320. Right. Right. So okay. with the knowledge of the cycles, you can actually multiply well, by 320. I, you know, we, we, you're we, old. Okay, look, if this thing goes to a million, I'm super happy. And yeah. I think everybody's super happy. Can we make more potentially? I don't know. Uh, I, I will say that I'm not here to... I want to try, try to get some general things that apply to normal people because we're also not going to live forever, right? right so, right. you know, so if we look at, okay, 
let's say you think maybe depending on your age, maybe you got another 50 years to live or whatever, right? Or maybe you only maybe you only have ten. You know, you really you really think okay, I'm getting to, towards the end, and I got ten. I, you know, I I am a, like an extent life extensionist, but okay. Let's okay, follow. well, yeah. Okay, well, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're gonna keep on extending. Um, yeah. But uh, but you have a certain amount of time, and yeah. if you think about this Bitcoin thing, it gives you a little bit of guidance, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start looking at this and understanding it just. Just, but it does appear that we are kind of on the low. I just want to recap this for people. We're on the low of this kind of analysis. We're, we, we, it looks like we could go to a million in 10 years yep. or sooner or sooner, right? Because you know, yeah, if, we get, if we get a bubble, which I think we are going to get a bubble. So I do think we're going to get it sooner potentially mm -hmm. and then followed by kind of pretty wicked crash, right? That's correct. You know, my view is, as a as a person who's been in a lot of financial markets, you know, deeply, um, I, I've you know I've seen a lot of financial crashes, even when the underlying thing is doing pretty good, sure. right? Like the internet crashed hard in two thousand, yeah. But usage of the internet kept going, kept yeah, going, kept a, going. In a certain right? sense, is a sign of health, right? Because yeah. it's basically like a, you're stressing the system, and the system mm -hmm. wants to go back to its original trend, and that right. is actually. Uh, uh, you know, what you don't want is the tulip scenario, right? When something goes exponential, it crashes and it never recovers. But if it has like a quality, like a power law, it will actually right. continue to go. But you know, it's a, I, I've done a lot of studies of uh, optimization models. And I, I, I want to close pretty soon, but I would, have you ever seen the secretary problem or the marriage problem in the st optimal stopping theory? I know about it's very simple. Let me let me tell you the problem. Yeah, go ahead, right? go ahead. So the problem is, and it's usually it's a little bit sexist, but it's a bride, and the bride needs to pick a husband. Yes. Okay. And so the bride uh, has only one criteria, which is to pick the richest husband. Okay. So she is going to be uh, given, let's say, fifty husbands to pick from, and there mm -hmm. she has to pick sequentially. And so what she does is she goes, okay, what are you worth? So the first person comes and he says, I'm worth $100,000. And she has to decide, do you marry him or do you go to the next one? The next one comes and he says, I'm worth $150,000. Yep. Marry or not. And that's the sequence. And you know nothing about anything other than that. And the question is, is there a, an optimal way to play this game? Mm -hmm. And it turns out there is. And it's amazing, right? The optimal way to play this game is you take one over E, so roughly a third, right? And the first third of the people, you always say no to. <laughs> and you just figure out what is the richest person in the first third. Right. And then you marry the next person that's rich that equals that. Hmm. That turns out to be the top thing, right? So I'm wondering if there's something like, and a very, it's a very fundamental thing you can read about it with Markov processes yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Markov we'll processes really are very relevant to these kind of organic models and stuff, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And so, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of math. A guy that I knew called uh, Sam Carlin. And, uh -huh. uh, and at Stanford, a very good textbook. Okay. Uh, second course in stochastic process. And he, he actually stopped working in math and he ended up working in biology afterwards. A second, yeah, uh, send me the, uh, the name. Yeah, so anyways, so Carlin wrote, he, he wrote all about these things, the stopping uh -huh. probably. Anyways, yeah, so this, this, cool this, is a, this, is a, this is a tough book, but, uh, but uh, you know, anyways, mathematicians have always been interested in these problems, right? Yeah. Like, and this sort of follows the same kind of thing. So one of the, one of the, the kind of the, uh, it seems to me that a solution might be like this, okay, you want to you figure out how much it's going to make over the next 10 years. OK, right. that's going to be a million. OK, the next time it gets to a million between now and, and 10 years, sell. Mm -hmm. You see, and then just wait until it gets back to trend line. Yeah, yes. there's probably something like this that's very similar to. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I, I think, Fred, uh, this is a little bit better because it's less stochastic and more deterministic. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. It has to be some kind of ideal. In fact, I'm I'm working on that. I want to come up with a, a kind of an ideal strategy 
and also it depends of course on your ag aggressiveness right because if you are if you have 100 bitcoin probably want to be very cautious if you have a 0.1 bitcoin and you know you want to multiply these bitcoins probably want to take a little bit more of aggressive approach but you know it depends on the investor but of course you want to do it also with cautions yeah. etc but this is, you know this is this is pretty fascinating Giovanni. it is fascinating yeah and, and okay so we so we know so you've been when did you realize i'm just going to continue a little bit but then i'm going to wrap up when did sure. you first of all when did you kind of really put all this stuff together what year did you put all this stuff together so like i say i, I started to see power laws all the way to 2013 but the big breakthrough was to realize that i didn't need this two-step process if i could find a direct relationship between time and sometimes people say but why don't you use a, a you know block time well, because I don't know anything about block time. I know about real time, and if I can f work well, it's real pretty, time, it's pretty, it's pretty close. I mean, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. And plus, you know, that is the time that we use as humans to make predictions. I, I, it's very difficult to make prediction using block time. But if you use a re natural time, it's easier, right? So, so just just for the readers, just to, to to clarify, right? Time is measured obviously in 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 uh, minutes or seconds or years, right? But then. We also have this other kind of uh, counter of time, which is how many blocks are produced, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so just you can you can measure time in either of these coordinate systems, and you know we know that there are roughly roughly a happening every four years, but it's not every four years, right? No. It's it, it's whatever whatever, and it could be it could be it could be quite different, really, right? So. Yeah, they're close well, enough, and they're really close enough. Seems well, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Yeah, and uh, and so, you know, when I did the graph, and that happened, it was uh, two thousand fourteen, I think. To, sorry, right. two thousand seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. Okay. When I did that graph of a, a time log of time and log of price, and they saw that crazy straight line, that when I had a breakthrough, and I posted mm -hmm. on Reddit. And almost, you know, very, very few people even consider it as there were people making fun of me. And okay. they say, no, you know, this is a big deal, guys. You don't realize it's a big deal. Uh, and I had a pieces that were missing. For example, I have to be thankful to Plan B to point out uh, the importance of the cycles because that doesn't come from the power law. That yeah. is an addition. It's almost like I, I, I made this joke. It's like Bitcoin is like this very steady you know, beautiful girlfriend that, you know, if you want to be sexist or whatever, it's just, yeah. uh, you know, it's a very steady and so on. And then once in a while you go to balls, right? But then everything comes back to the trend and it's part of a story and we can use both, right? The bo information from both. Of the, I, components. The, the thing, the thing that immediately attracted me about your just simple graph though, was that it, what the, the, there wasn't this, all this X, I think if you put too much stuff and you try to look at it too much, yes, you know, you can get there's a sort of a back testing kind of bias error type stuff, mm -hmm. and you can get a little too caught up with it, right? You can start Correct. thinking, okay, and, and I think Plan B got too caught up with it, to be honest, Correct. right? In, Correct. in other words, he was sort of like, we can't go down because you know we're at this thing and we're at this level, and yep. you know, like it would impossible, like and. It, that's not what this stuff's telling you. No, this because is, it, with, it, with models, the simplest yeah. they are, right? Uh, right. It, it really, this model, that if you stick with the power law, it's yeah. one parameter because the intersection, it's zero because uh, Bitcoin is supposed to be zero at time zero. So it's very close. It's 10 to the minus 17. Right. So what, yeah. I'm, what I want to try to get out of this, I don't want to get, I don't want to try to throw too much in, and everybody's like, well, what? maybe I can spot. Look, number one, this thing is a power law. It seems to be going extremely regularly, but having said that, I mean there are some massive dips, obviously on the on the price chart, right? That, that are, yeah. un, that look, are not look avoidable. At this, this is even bring the point even more. <laughs> look at this. I took actually now you don't even see the bubble, and it's even yeah. clearer how straight this thing is. You know? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. It's yeah. This crazy. this is an amazing graph. Um, okay. Do you have any other graphs you want to kind of quickly show us, and then we'll kind of wrap up. Uh, no, oh. and you know maybe very quickly this this is another idea about the scaling variance, right? How 
you right start, like fractal up a system right. you know basically yeah. it's like a fractal like a little tree looks like a big tree mm -hmm. uh, and so on this is the main concept beyond the scale invariance that gives you a philosophy so etfs will not change is simply what uh, we need for the next step this is why and when when uh, the factor of 10 is there there will be something else you know maybe Bitcoin becomes a monetary system of reward. The nations start to use it uh, uh, as a, you know, their reserve. So, what, so what's on. your what's your view on that? What, when do when, how do you sort of see Bitcoin evolving, uh, other than just in price? Like, do you see? I, I years see it being the currency of the world is going no, to. That's be what I'm telling world. people. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I was on a podcast today and I said, look, I think at the end of the day. We went from gold being the currency to paper stuff, you know, the British pound to the U.S. dollar to now we're going to Bitcoin. And that Bitcoin is going to be the currency in 20, 30 years. It, people will have forgotten about the dollar. They, yeah. I mean, it'll, it may still be around, but at the end of the day, we're moving into a world currency called Bitcoin. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And it also tells you. It's certainly not going to be denominated in Ethereum, uh, in my opinion. No. You know, uh, I mean, the, the, you know the, what I was telling you before about the value being in the network is also yeah. a commentary on shit coins. That it tells you that everything else is shit coins because, and Al Finney had something like that. He had a sentence that was related to that and basically was saying, listen, I'm not worried about other coins because the moment that you have us and i think he was talking more about forks or whatever but it's right. the same principle the moment you create something else and you start to migrate there you're taking the value from this first thing and you can do that over and over again so you will never be able to associate value to a network unless you stick with it that is exactly like i say it's what happened with organism once they decided to work together and join you cannot really right. leave the organism. I know it sounds bad because, you know, what is uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Hotel California, but it's a good Hotel California because, it you know, is. it's a, it's a, but, and look, of... at the end of the day, like, why did the, why is the U.S. where it is today? It's because the world needed a standardization, right? After exactly. the Second World War, right? And, you know, we needed to standardize on something and, yes. you know, and it wasn't really going to be the British pound anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the, the dollar, the, the U.S. was kind of the, the country left standing, you know. Yeah. Every, everybody else was kind of like in shambles. Exactly. And so we had, we had an economy. We had, the, we, had the, uh, we had the currency. And, you know, it was a little bit like, well, let, I want gold. And people are like, no, it's fine. You know, it, let's just leave it for that. So... It's standardized on the dollar and having standards is critical. You know, I it think at one critical. point, it's critical. at one point, Germany it. had like hundreds of currencies in Germany, yeah, you know, it's crazy. and people were, people would have to convert six times to get from, if they were going to go from one part of Germany to the other, you had to, you had to do yeah. like, yeah, uh, same thing with Italy. Italy was a bunch of small little states and this is why, you know, we had all these uh, very clever people, but uh, we were conquered by others. You know, right. this is what happened because we were fragmented. We had all these coins, etc. It was crazy. You know exactly. Right. So yeah. So yeah. So we, you know, having it standardized is has enormous value, and I, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see us, le le you know, losing that. I don't see. Mm -hmm. I think, I think there's going to be. I tell people that I think the the dominance of Bitcoin is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger uh, yeah. because. Because it's just going to become the standard money of the world, and and you know, and the and power law you, tells you exactly when you can tell. Okay, it, it will no. take this time to when we are going to go over the gold. It's a very predictive model, very predictive. Yeah, model. it does. It, it definitely feels to me like if we had to put it there, uh, I would say it would be twenty thirty because I think we. It's, I think we're going to talk about fifty million dollar Bitcoin. Yeah. That feels to me at kind of a price at which Bitcoin is the world currency. Yeah. Fifty yeah. million dollars per coin. You know what I mean? Right. So we got we got we got, you know, we, we gotta hang out. What sorry, what did I say? Twenty You say thirty, but actually the model no, no. says uh ten million in two thousand fifty. Yeah. Two, sorry, twenty fifty. Sorry. Twenty fifty. Yeah. Twenty twenty thirty to get to a million, twenty fifty to get to something like fifty million, Correct. right? 
Correct. So 2050, you know, it'll be kind of, we'll be in the super old age homes, you know, taking our life extension drugs. Yep. But, you know, we, we, we probably AI. are going to, AI. AI, we're going to have some AI, get some new AI components, you know, some new eyes, you know, some new exactly. brain parts. Yeah. This is why I but, say all the time, I don't want to go beyond the 2050 making predictions. In fact, no. it's already a stretch because, you know, who, who knows how the world will look like by then? Because, uh, you know, while Bitcoin is growing in this very steady way, technology, is, it is exponential. In fact, it's a, a double exponential. It's really fast, you know? And so in okay. 2000... Oh, that's interesting. It's almost impossible to predict what... Uh, so you're saying technology is exponential, right? Yeah, it's actually super exponential. It's uh, Okay, so e to, the, e to the E to the X, yeah. right? <laughs> It's crazy, yeah. Okay, so technology is super exponential. Unfortunately, we don't know. We can't just buy tech, right? Buying tech, yeah. we never know where to buy the tech. Yeah, because right? it jumps, right? You, you, right? It's on innovating, 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 and then you yeah. need to jump both because you know right. the, the mechanical flow. But the value is not in the te in the technology; it's in the utility. When a new technology comes right. in, so you yeah. jump both, you jump both. So that's a that's a great world view, right? So we have this super exponential technology growth, mm -hmm. and, and Raoul Paul always talks about the exponential age. But I think he he'd be very interested in knowing it's actually super exponential. Yeah, it is super. Exponential. <laughs> but anyways, it, it's super exponential. We're we're in this super exponential technology thing, but probably the best risk reward bet even in a super exponential technology thing is just to buy bitcoin right yeah now. it's it's like gold right because it's uh, yeah. as secure as safe because uh, the time when bitcoin could crash and destroy go to zero is gone forever because yeah. it's, it's too incredible it's too stable it's too uh, um, you know resilient so when people talk about risk yeah there is a risk anytime you make investment of course there is a risk but it's one of the safest investment that you but it's also the other thing i just but realized instead, you, you know yeah. if you if you look at my graph of gold that you know in the spiral yeah. it yeah. stays there it's like a circle it doesn't go anywhere and instead right. you have this beautiful super parabola so it's not an exponential right. it's still growing very nicely but you know in a steady scale invariant way that is the way of stability of strength you know, it's really a worldview. Once you start to go inside this right. story. Of now, the, the other world. great thing about it is like what you just said is like, look, a lot of people are like, maybe I should put my money not in Bitcoin, but in, you know, Tesla or Google. Yeah. And here's one thing I thought of is if you put your money in Bitcoin and all this tech stuff is going to make, it's going to lower, it's basically a depreciation factor, yeah. right? It's, 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 it's is deflationary it's giving you these great things right it's giving you these great new products that they, that nobody could even even have imagined mm -hmm. and all you need to do is just do really well in terms of just general purchasing power which you will with bitcoin yeah and you're also going to be benefit from all the tech exactly so you you get the tech for free you get yeah. the tech for free. and and you know i follow your uh, updates your episodes and so yeah. on and so many times you talk about you know this person did a disallocation to their portfolio and it was like 10 percent bitcoin it's ridiculous right i mean this is why seller again you know he's writing so many things when he says you know yeah there is no second best what what, what are you wasting your time in investing well and, in and also companies? here's the here's the other problem is once you understand this stuff Okay, if you're putting 10% of your money on on Bitcoin, where are you putting the other 90%? What are you yeah. doing with it? Are you just yeah. putting it in an index fund? Are you put are you buying a second house and putting it on Airbnb? Is is that is that how because that second house on Airbnb Sorry. is not if you have 90% in the Airbnb and 10% on Bitcoin, that's not a good Asset it's allocation. going to be a liability. Anything else than yeah. Bitcoin is a liability. It's not an investment. You know, it's almost say, hey, how can you can I reduce my, in, uh, in, you know, my growth in Bitcoin? Oh, let me invest in something else. You know, it's it's not going to help you with being safer because Bitcoin it's safe. It's the safest thing, and it's not going to help you with your, you know, with your gains. Now, the only thing that can really go faster, but temporarily are shit coins yes there are shit co some shit coins we mm. can do 100 pair in a year but you know you the risk is immense is immense because you know like anything that grows so fast it's going to crash right. and if you don't time it right it's luck 
you know, okay, yeah. I might go to Las Vegas at that point, right? So uh, with Bitcoin, it's not like that. It's not like that. Look right. at that power law. Look at this power law. Look at, look at this thing. Look at this thing. You know, yeah. and he did it for 15 years. Do you think he's that's, not going to do it that's for insane. Five? What did you do to take the, the you just I, I use a ransack that is a method, um, a statistical method where basically it's taking off all the uh, outliers. Okay. Uh, so the outliers are the bubble. And so all one, those the outlaws were just taken out algorithmically. This is yes, not you. I didn't do it by hand. I, I use a statistical method where I say, hey, take out these, uh, you know, the outliers of it are as big as this and then this is what you're left with wow and this i think it's the most i mean this is just the it's this is look it's a difficult subject i want to try to i'm going to try to dumb this thing down and break it up into little pieces because i think that one of the problems that math people face okay is they assume that everybody knows all this stuff but they don't right so i'm going to try to break down everything that we talked about into little chunks like what's a logarithm what's uh what what are these the x the, what's the intercept and the slope what's the example what is the tech uh you know the what what do we mean by super exponential blah 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 and i'm gonna try to put it together in a big tweet storm for you giovanni thank you, and i'm gonna link to you thank you so, so much I thank you very sure. much for your time yeah and just out of curiosity are you are you I'm in so glad that we connected you know sorry are you in the u.s or are you in uh um... san diego san diego so san diego. we are not too far maybe one day we have a dinner yeah. together or something i would love to perfect meet you in person. i would love to it's it's been a pleasure giovanni thank you very thank much you. thank you so thank much. you bye-bye bye bye